Every morning, millions of people across the globe begin their day with a bowl of cereal quick, convenient and endlessly customizable. But have you ever wondered how those golden crunchy flakes of corn actually make it into your bowl? The journey from humble kernel to breakfast. Icon is a tale that stretches from America's vast corn belt to state-of-the-art food factories. Combining agriculture, technology, and culinary chemistry in a process more complex than most would. At the core of every flake is a special variety of corn, not the sweet corn we grill in summer or the popcorn we eat at the movies, but a tougher, industrial-grade strain grown specifically for processing. In spring, farmers begin planting in large, flat fields using precision equipment that ensures even seed distribution. Within a week, green shoots emerge and begin their three- to four-month journey to maturity. Each stalk grows 10 to 12 feet tall and produces one to two ears of corn each packed with around 800 dense golden kernels. By late summer or early fall, the corn looks dead dry, yellow, and brittle. But that's exactly what farmers want. Massive combined sweep through fields, removing stalks, husking ears, and separating kernels in a single pass, harvesting up to 50 tons per day. From there, the kernels head to processing plants where they're stored in gigantic silos. Some, holding up to 25 million pounds of corn. The properly stored, corn can remain usable for up to five years. But most of it doesn't sit long. Factories constantly pull corn for processing, beginning with a rigorous cleaning and sorting process. Kernels are graded by size, color, and purity, using air jets and vibrating screens to remove debris. Next. The corn enters enormous pressure cookers where it's mixed with water and a secret blend of flavoring agents. Cooked slowly over three hours, the kernels absorb moisture and flavor until they reach about 30% moisture content. After cooking, the corn is cooled and gently dried to 19% moisture to prepare for the most iconic step flaking. Soft kernels are pressed between two massive, slightly heated steel rollers. One roller spins slightly faster than the other, creating the perfect amount of pressure to flatten each kernel into a flake without breaking it. The resulting flakes are smooth, uniformly shaped, and lightly golden, but still soft and flavorless. Next, they enter high-temperature ovens where they're toasted to perfection. The moisture drops from 19% to just 3%, locking in crunch, flavor, and color. At this point, the flakes are golden and crispy, but not quite done. Then the flakes move through a final dryer and are blasted with cool air to set the coating, prevent clumping, and preserve that crisp texture. Before packaging, each batch undergoes one last quality check. Trained inspectors and automated systems work together to spot and remove any imperfect flakes. Approved flakes are then precisely weighed, funneled into bags, and sealed with heat. Packaging sensors verify every bag meets exact weight and size standards before the bags are inserted. Into branded boxes. Each box gets labeled with product details, nutrition facts, and expiration dates. Finally, the finished cereal is moved to climate-controlled storage, ready for shipment. In just 24 hours, over a million boxes can roll off a single production. Line heading to grocery store shelves and ultimately to homes across the country. Whether you eat cereal in the morning as a midnight snack or straight out of the box while binge-watching your favorite show, there's now a deeper story behind every bite. Americans love pickles. So much so that we devour more than 9 billion of them every single year, nearly 20 pounds of pickles per person annually. Whether they're stacked on burgers, served alongside deli sandwiches, or eaten straight from the jar in the middle of the night, pickles are more than just a snack in America. The Today, we're taking a behind-the-scenes journey into a modern U.S. pickle factory, exploring the incredible process that takes cucumbers from farm to jar. It all begins in the fields of California, 
where the Central Valley's Mediterranean climate mild winters, long sunny days, and nutrient-rich soil makes it one of the most productive cucumber-growing regions in the country. Cucumbers are harvested when they're between 5 and 10 centimeters long. And while it may sound quaint, the harvesting process is anything but. Sophisticated machines do the job of hundreds of workers, using vibrating arms, cutting blades. Once a machine's bin is full, it pulls alongside a transport truck, and the hydraulic system unloads the cucumbers with care to prevent bruising. From there, the cucumbers are transported to a processing plant where the real magic begins dot at the factory. Trucks are weighed and inspected before unloading their cargo into hoppers. A quick visual check is done to remove damaged or deformed. Produce. Then the cucumbers enter a washing system where high-pressure jets and rotating brushes scrub away any soil, debris or insects. They move along conveyor belts through automated sorters that separate them by size, an essential step to ensure uniform pickling. Next, the sorted cucumbers are transferred into massive fermentation tanks filled with a brine solution made of water, salt, vinegar, and spices. This brine not only gives pickles their signature flavor, but also acts as a natural preservative. Inside these tanks, the cucumbers undergo natural fermentation over the course of three months. However, fermentation also raises the salt content significantly, up to four times that of seawater. To make them edible again, the pickles are moved into hot water baths where excess salt is leached out gradually. Fresh water is cycled in repeatedly, over a 24-hour period, until the salt concentration reaches a more palatable 2%. During this step, turmeric is often added, not for flavor, but for color. The golden spice gives pickles their signature yellow-green hue without altering their taste. All pickles are aligned inside cutting machines fitted with wavy, crinkle-cut blades that deliver consistent textured slices. These ridged cuts aren't just aesthetic. They help retain brine and maximize crunch. Sliced pickles are then funneled into jars by automated machines that portion out the perfect amount. To ensure a tight vacuum seal, steam is injected into the jars just before they're capped. The steam forces air out, and as the jars cool, a vacuum forms under the lid, preserving freshness. That pop you hear when opening a jar? That's the seal releasing, a sign that the vacuum process worked. Every jar then passes under sensors that check for air pockets or faulty seals. Immediately after, they are cooled in water baths to stop the cooking process and maintain the crisp texture of the pickles done with the pasteurization complete. Jars are labeled with brand names, nutritional information, and expiration dates. There, grouped into boxes or trays and moved to climate-controlled storage rooms until they're shipped across the country. Thanks to this massive streamlined operation, some U.S. pickle factories produce more than 500 tons of pickles every day. That's over half a million jars daily. Pickles can stay shelf-stable and retain their flavor and texture for up to two years. Though for most pickle lovers, they don't last anywhere near that long. Imagine this, you're a kid again. You hold in your hands a shiny foil-wrapped chocolate egg. But this isn't just any chocolate, this one holds a secret. You peel away the wrapper, split the delicate shell, and out pops a tiny yellow capsule. Inside, a toy, a, maybe even a miniature car. That, my friends, is the magic of a kinder surprise every year. He wanted to bring the joy of Easter egg surprises to children, not once a year, but every day. The concept was brilliantly simple. Combine smooth, delicious chocolate with a hidden toy. Each kinder, surprise egg is made of a dual-layer chocolate shell, creamy milk chocolate on the outside, and farmers harvest ripe cacao pods by hand, slice them open, and scoop out the seeds, which are surrounded by sweet pulp. These beans are left to ferment for several days, a crucial step that unlocks 
the complex, rich flavors of cocoa. After fermentation, they're sun-dried for around 10 days, reducing moisture and preparing them for shipment. Meanwhile, dairy farms supply the milk component, which undergoes pasteurization and then spray drying to transform it into powdered. Milk. This powdered form has a longer shelf life and integrates better into chocolate recipes. For the cocoa beans are roasted and ground into a thick, flavorful paste called cocoa mass. This is then pressed to extract two components, cocoa butter, which gives chocolate its smooth, melt-in-your-mouth texture, and cocoa solids, which contribute. Flavor and color. The manufacturing of kinder chocolate involves precision blending. Cocoa mass, cocoa butter, powdered milk, sugar, and a touch of soy less than an emulsifier are mixed in carefully calibrated proportions. The mixture is then passed through steel rollers to refine the chocolate, reducing particle size to under 20 microns. This ultra-fine consistency ensures the chocolate is velvety smooth and free from any gritty texture dot. The distinctive egg-shaped molds are made of durable plastic and sanitized before use. Then a thinner layer of white chocolate is added and the spinning process is repeated. The yellow capsules made of food-safe plastic are pre-filled with toys. A small amount of heat is applied to the joining edges, melting the chocolate just enough to fuse both halves together into a seamless whole. This seal is strong enough to keep the capsule securely inside without compromising the chocolates. Integrity Before packaging, every egg undergoes strict quality control. Both automated systems and trained inspectors check for cracks, misalignments, or any deformities. Once approved, each egg is wrapped in a specially designed foil, printed with the Kinder branding and often featuring seasonal or limited edition. Artwork The foil not only preserves freshness, but also blocks light and moisture crucial for maintaining chocolate quality. The final step? Packaging and distribution. The eggs are placed into display-ready boxes, loaded onto pallets, and shipped to stores across the world. By the time they reach your hands, each kinder surprise egg has gone through dozens of steps, from cacao harvest to foil wrapping, all designed to deliver a perfect combination of taste and excitement. If you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates. Share your thoughts in the comment section down below.